All right, I want to mention some things from the Raw after WrestleMania. If you want the full review, Dave and I spent uh, 45 minutes or so on it last night on Wrestling Observer Radio for subscribers. WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. But here are the keys coming out of the Raw after WrestleMania. Number one, it appears we have two years' worth of WrestleMania main events tentatively in the works here. The first one is The Rock versus Cody. Uh, which they kicked off with a 45-minute opening segment commercial-free, which uh, ran about 10 minutes longer than it was supposed to, but I thought was incredibly compelling because, my God, this rock, this guy. i never seen a guy who can do so little. Actually, Randy Orton does it in the ring, but as far as, like, promos, <laughs> this guy is something else. And I don't know why, but one of my favorite WWE things in a long time was... The preposterous drama of those two guys trading belts so that Rock could hold the current world title. It was just, it was amazing. But anyway, point of this is, Rock states that he is leaving for a while. He's going to go make movies or whatever. But at some point, he is going to come back. And whether Cody is the champion or not, he is coming after Cody. And uh, Cody made a comment about how you're the boss, you're, uh, you know, TKO on the board, but uh, I am your champion. And Rock says, you are my champion, but before I go, I have something that I want to give you. And so he reaches into his pocket. He does not pull out a middle finger, which I thought for sure was what he was going to pull out. But he had something in his hand. He told Cody to open his hand. He put whatever this was into Cody's hand, and then he told Cody, don't you ever break my heart again, and he left. And, you know, as we've been talking about for a while, you know, fans love a mystery. They love trying to figure out something that is going on. They had another one, actually, on the show. There was a, uh, a random glitch, and the word hello appeared at the bottom of the screen, which my guess is uh, the return of, of Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy. But we'll see where they go with it. But people, people, they love that sort of thing. And that's why even though people voted uh, that they hated that uh, devil storyline with MGF and Adam Cole, I mean, that thing, that thing drew a lot of money because it was a mystery and people wanted to find out who the devil was. So It drew a lot of money. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know what? Their pay-per-views always do well. So that's the one thing you could always say is, you know, their World's End World's End did very well. And yeah, they did good did. numbers for all of those segments. I mean, that was a very successful angle, even though people voted that they hated it. I mean, yeah, as well, far as, like, know, viewership and spending money, I mean, people did. Well, and then, look, you can have financial success without having critical success. You see that in movies all the time. Now, I believe that The Rock... You know, a lot of people were out there making jokes about, you know, he put like some truck keys in in Cody's hand. And that's not true because Rock didn't film it for social media and he would never give away a truck to a family member or a professional wrestler if he wasn't filming that. But I believe that he put a little travel size bottle of the new Papa Tui shampoo that The Rock is out there pimping. He put that in Cody's hand and closed it up and said, you know, I'll, I'll see you the next time. I'm going to tell you what I think it is. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. So first off, Wednesday, besides AEW showing their backstage footage on their show, uh, WWE is also doing their documentary about the the build towards this mania with all of the backstage explanations for everything, okay? The mania so, of mania. Remember that? This, this era of WWE, they have no issue with spoiling everything off air. Okay, on the air it's one thing, off the air they don't mind pulling back the curtain at all. Okay, ESPN era. Okay, now on Sunday night they told the story at the press conference that uh, Nick Khan and Bruce Prichard and whoever else Triple H they claimed that they found the exact watch that Dusty sold to a pawn shop well over a decade ago to pay for Cody and his sister to go to acting school in L.A., okay? They claim they found the exact same watch. I am monstrously skeptical of this, okay? So 
they gifted him this watch. And I don't know if you guys notice or not, but Cody, when he comes out, he's always wearing a suit and he's always wearing a nice watch. Okay. Well, last night, the night after getting this exceedingly special watch, the watch that was on his father's wrist, that his father pawned, that somehow Nick Khan and Bruce Pritchard, they found the exact watch allegedly. He was not wearing that watch. So I think that the watch is now part of, is going to be part of the storyline. And that is what The Rock gave Cody. How that plays in this story, I don't know. But it would have fit into Rock's hand. Cody would have known what it was without opening his hand, which is which is exactly what Rock said. So I think that that is, is uh, what Rock gave him is his father's old watch that he pawned to get the, uh, Cody and his sister to, uh, to acting school. That you know is my what? prediction. You know what? We got a little bit of a feeling of Vince versus Stone Cold with Cody and The Rock last night. I wonder if Rock's going to reach back to that era and go back to Pulp Fiction and do the entire Christopher Walken speech about that watch and where Dusty hid it before he presents it to Cody. Perhaps. Hey, we've got one more thing to talk about from Raw after the break. Stick around, Observer Live. The last thing I want to mention from uh, Raw last night is Drew McIntyre ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it was made abundantly clear. We've known that for a while, but uh, last night the main event was a four-way to determine the number one contender for Damian Priest's new title, and uh, Drew McIntyre was in the match. And he did a promo, and he he buried Damian Priest, and he buried CM Punk. And they did the match, and he ended up in the corner. He was going for his 3-2, and all of a sudden, that dastardly CM Punk grabbed his ankle. He got distracted, and he got hit with a super kick and a big splash by Jey Uso. Jey Uso is now the number one contender to Priest's title. And, uh, and once again... Drew McIntyre has been screwed by CM Punk. And so uh, I believe that my uh, prediction from this weekend is exactly where they're going, which is that we've got a ways to go. I think it's in June. But uh, Drew is going to challenge Priest for the title at uh, Clash of the Castle. He is going to win his title at Clash of the Castle, which he didn't get to do against Roman Reigns, but he's going to get it this time, which means the two things... That this loyal soldier deserved a Clash of the Castle win and winning the title in front of a full house at Mania. He'll get both of them. And then uh, after that, we will slowly build to, uh, I think, next year's WrestleMania. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. CM Punk beats Drew for the title at that show. I think that's where they're going. But Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a... Commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again 
after a while.